Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimazeski with Adam Atkinson, and we're going to wrap up our series on planning your peak week. And we're going to we're going to finalize this with discussing how we manage clients who have back to back shows. So you know, first of all, that's a question I get all the time, Adam. Uh, you know, is it a good idea? Should, you know, how much space should I put between shows? And and what is your typical response to that? <laughs> Funny enough, that's probably my most asked question. Can I do back-to-back -back shows? And my question to the client is, can you? <laughs> and, and what I mean by that is, can you not go out and celebrate and do something crazy to where we have to make this dip to, you know, lose glycogen? Um, you know, even a lot of people think that when you store glycogen, it's just always in the muscle and, um, that spillover that happens, people seem to think that you're just going to lose the spillover when you dip back down. You actually lose it from the muscle tissue also. So you can't really, just like body fat, you can't choose where your stored glycogen comes from. So now if somebody celebrates so much post-show, I have to create this dip and then, you know, backload them back up into the show once they have that tightness. So I always say, if you can stay on point, which you should, the only reason you should want to compete is to be potentially better than the last time. If we just coast on that fullness and manage that process, back-to-back -back peaks are wonderful. A lot of times, you probably see this, we come in better because now we're just micromanaging a process we just did a week ago and now we're not creating as many waves as we maybe made to get that first amount of fullness for the show yep yep and, and you know i ask a question as well um, not just the fact that we have to make sure that you stay on point and you're not overdoing your food have to be extremely analytical because at the end of one show, if you're competing the next week, you're now seven days away. You're already in peak week. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I always ask, you know, at that same question, can you do it physically? Can you do it with travel, with work, financially? If you're, if you're planning these different contests, you have to realize that's a lot of time commitment. Mm -hmm. Is it even a good idea for you personally or professionally or with your family? But, but, Physically, this is, this is typically their question is, you know, physically, can I do it? And, and again, because I use a progressive linear load, that first show, as you mentioned, we're not creating these homeostatic atomic bombs that we need to recover from. We are literally going, you know, right up to that show. Contest day, you're probably going to have a little bit more food because we're working through those stage times and posing. And even if you don't really go out and celebrate, we're kind of starting at a front loaded position. So mm -hmm. now I just have to, to use your words, micromanage and see exactly where we're going for that week, start assessing. And it may be just a, a pretty linear week, or we may need to load a little bit at the end. And even if we do have to taper back a little bit, it, it is minor, you know? And so mm -hmm. I, I always say physically back to back shows can absolutely be a big win because I would almost guarantee I, I can make you look better that second week. Yeah, absolutely. I You made a good point, too. Um, going through a show is exhausting. And a lot of times, too, that Sunday, I really don't like my clients to train, even though we might have that slightly spilled over state. And I, I can make a little bit of a dip in the beginning if I feel I need to. But I usually find show day drains my clients so much. That You're they brutally just, sore just from posing. Yeah, you just need that first day off typically. And then you can go back into the um, training. And I, I might not go a leg day right into that, you know, because it'd be tentatively Sunday off Monday. Monday might be just a little early for legs, you know, because like you said, they've been posing them. That's a workout in itself, especially if you're bodybuilding or figure, you know, uh, I'll usually have them lay off the legs that additional week. I remember helping a client even win a pro title by taking that second week almost exclusively off because we had really good workouts the previous peak week and mm -hmm. then the posing was brutal and we ended up, like you said, having to recover from soreness and so by the middle of the week, we we're just doing some pretty light workouts and he looked even better just because he yeah. was more recovered and so 
again, guys, it comes down to the point that a lot of this is just pure management, which means applying the scientific method of observing and testing and, and then doing things that you know you can reproduce. But Adam, I want to thank you for helping with this entire series, and I am looking forward to, uh, to what we're going to chat about next. Thank you. All right, guys. So we will catch you next time for another series in Contest Prep University.